showtime. to the Rosie and Bill show. Our guest this week is truly a unique and special talent. She blends musical genres in ways few people ever have or would even attempt to do. And the first time I heard her sing, the only word I could come up with to describe it was, wow. Please welcome to the Rosie and Bill show, one of the most powerful and versatile voices in the music business today, Alina Sarala. Alina, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. That's a very, very generous <laughs> introduction. Very nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, we sure appreciate you joining us all the way from, well, you're in Germany, right? Yes. Yes. Wow. And you're also from Helsinki, Finland. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> and you grew up in a family of musicians and teachers. So the first thing that comes to my mind is, we understand you have a background in opera. When were you exposed to opera and when did you realize you had the chops for it? Well, I would say I was exposed to all kinds of classical music since I was a kid because yeah, my whole family was classical musicians, including my grandparents, most of them. So it was just a um, normality for me. And uh, you know, with my friend, we used to watch uh, operas like Carmen and and uh, Tosca from the of course we watched also Disney and other stuff but but you know <laughs> we loved watching that stuff as well and it was just something I, I I admired Placido Domingo for example a lot when I was younger still do and um, then I I always loved singing but it wasn't really like oh I want to do opera but it was just that I started taking lessons and then yeah I was just went from there, I guess. <laughs> Speaking of going from there, at one point, you ended up in London. And while you were in London studying, uh, you, you gravitated and kind of moved into another genre. And you founded uh, the melodic metal band Angel Nation. So I'm curious, what led to that transition? Was it something that you came across while you were studying in London? Or what led you to go from opera and that classical background into melodic metal and, and forming Angel Nation? Yeah, that's a question I get asked a lot, obviously. And um, basically the whole reason I moved to London was to study for a year because I finished my degree in, in Helsinki and then I wanted to still learn new styles. I wanted to try the other styles. And, and um, I was always writing music as well. So I thought, okay, maybe it would be nice to be able to sing my own songs as well. Correct in a way. And um, yeah, I did this course and we went through all the styles from jazz to rock and pop and everything. And uh, I really loved rock. Like that was my thing. I really loved performing it. But then I obviously didn't really feel comfortable with the whole pop voice thing. And I felt like, well, I'm never gonna be able to do it with my voice. And um, then other things happened. I ended up staying in, in, in London and uh, ended up meeting with a lot of people from the scene. I got introduced to this metal scene and went to the clubs and really loved it all. And then, you know, I started writing music again uh, and thought, okay, I'm gonna write something that I feel I could do with my voice. And I wanted to combine this heavier sound 
And, you know, I wasn't really aware of all this. Of course, I knew Night Vision, you know, like within Temptation and stuff, but I wasn't really copying everyone, anyone. It was just something I felt, okay, this could fit my voice and I want to do this and then this and this and that. And that's kind of combining all these uh, different styles. And yeah, I think, I think that's, that's in a nutshell how I then started back then Enkele Nation, but nowadays Angel Nation. Well, it really is such a unique blend of the two. And it's striking when you watch the videos. I mean, you do it so well. You have this, this beautiful, full, haunting voice. And then it's it's just the background is all this heavy, you know, instrumentation. It's it's extremely cool. <laughs> <laughs> and we and we we love just the 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 way you set it the setting of the music like the viking themes and all of that it's it's really great how much do you have in that part of the production well i mean obviously now we're talking about Lee's eyes so that's another band uh with the viking theme and uh that's actually the band where i'm using more a bit more of my classical voice as well so because it's it's uh, written a bit differently and um it always has to fit the songs. It has to fit the, like you said, the atmosphere and the vibe of the song. So um, it's something that was always part of Lake's Eyes. I mean, I joined the band in 2016, um, but it's been always an uh, essential part of the band. They've always taken a lot of influences from the Norwegian mythology and also these Viking uh, sagas and everything. So yeah, that's part of Liv's eyes, and uh, I'm I'm glad that you think I also fit there so well with my voice and everything. I really enjoy doing it, and it's it's a kind of very theatrical, also based on history. So it's really cool. Definitely. And what what brought you into that group? Oh well, that's uh, also a long story. But if I tell it very shortly, it was just. Uh, we actually met, uh, I was playing with my own band Angel Nation and um, Leaf Size was there as well. We played on a same festival and then we met very, well, actually we didn't meet then, but a little bit later on in London when we were supporting them as well. And then a few months later, I got a call and they asked me to come to Germany and I went knowing nothing and ended up, ended up then being asked to join the band. So <laughs> it was a pretty crazy story. Yeah, that sounds like uh, one of those things, you know, the, the old saying, everything happens for a reason. And, and I think that definitely happened for a reason and, and for the right reason, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like the, the road that I've been, you know, I've been working very hard, of course. It was uh, starting a band is, is a huge task and you have to really work from the zero. And I was, you know, with the help of uh, a lot of people getting into the place where you know then you meet these people then you meet those people and then you ended you know that's how it is in life and you're absolutely right about that yeah and how is it is it difficult uh you know fronting you know both bands i mean obviously you said you, you work hard you work a lot but how do you balance all that um well i mean it's to be honest hasn't been a problem so far it's it's about scheduling and uh seeing what works and what takes priority and you know like now i was making the album with angel nation and obviously there were no shows now for ages because of corona so it wasn't really an issue but it, it never really was i mean we just kind of work it out and uh i like doing both because Angel Nation is, is different from Leaves Eyes, which is also nice. So I'm not doing two identical uh, bands and I'm also writing the music for Angel Nation mainly. So that's a different thing for me. And, and yeah, it's, it's just, uh, I like doing different kind of things. And keeps Elena, when you write, do you write lyrics first or do you write, you said you play the piano, do you write on the piano? That depends a little bit, but I would say often starts with the music and then lyrics come after. But it could also be that I have a chorus with the lyric, uh, like a chorus idea something, and then I start building around it. So often it started also just with a lyrical idea that came with the music. Sometimes it's really like 
words often just there's instantly a melody for me like it's often mm. you can't separate it and then yeah it's hard to explain but it's it's um, it's difficult to just clinically write lyrics without having any melody in my head just instantly popping right <laughs> I want to double back for a second because we we mentioned that you came from a family of musicians. What did your parents do? And um, you know, when you did make the transition from opera, were they supportive of that? Was it a difficult vocal transition for you? Uh, yeah. Well, my my mother is a violinist, and uh, my my father is a pianist. Uh, so. <laughs> And they were both in the Sibelius Academy. It's a university in Helsinki. And also, of course, playing concerts and stuff, in, mainly in the past as well. But um, obviously, they don't, they are very, very supportive. And I have to say, a lot of things would have been not possible without their support. So I'm very grateful for them. And they don't really care what genre. I mean, they were attending also Leaves Eyes concerts. And now they're coming to London to see me with Angel Nation. So, oh. you know, it's it's uh, it's not about the genre, but it's just me being, you know, doing what I love. So, yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's fantastic. And, and one thing I, I was also wondering about in terms of the different genres, and that is when when you're performing on stage as, as a singer, and, and I know you've played in front of some huge crowds at, at festivals um, and different concerts and things like that. And I'm, you know, you get that kind of rush, that feeling. Is is there a difference between that rush or feeling as an opera singer versus going out and fronting Angel Nation or Leaves Eyes in front of those big crowds? Um, yeah, there is a difference, obviously. I mean, I, I forgot to answer your question about the vocal transition. Yes, I mean, <clears throat> um, it's like I said, I'm, I'm never going to be a pop singer, so I'm not really singing completely different style, but I've developed something that I feel like is in between. And now I've also explored a little bit more of that more rock, poppy sounds in, with my voice. I like to always um, kind of try and develop myself. Uh, but with the crowds, I mean, yeah, of course, it's completely different because um, let's say in opera, you have a not choreography but like sometimes even choreography with dances and stuff like that so you know exactly what you're doing and uh you know it's not like you can you don't have to make the crowd going you you do your thing and it's of course you connect with the audience but i think it's a little bit different kind of connection um and and yeah you don't have a microphone that's a huge difference i mean you you have to use a voice over an orchestra uh, and it has to be acoustically, people need to hear. So it's, yeah, very different for sure. That's one aspect that I hadn't even really uh, thought of in terms of the microphone. Wow, that, that is such a great point. Wow, that, that, that in and of itself is a huge difference. Yeah, yeah, and you know, with the in-ears and everything, and then you have the drums and guitars. Yeah, <laughs> it's a completely different kind of, kind of vibe. Yeah. Do you like working with a mic? Um, that's a good question. I mean, um, if I have to really choose, I probably still like the most singing without microphone. I like to hear my voice in the actual acoustic, uh, because it's a completely different feeling when you have in-ears and you hear your voice through the microphone. Um, so yeah, but I mean, both are, it's a different technique and you also kind of have to learn it. That's great. I was wondering, do you have a favorite song that you've written or a favorite memory from Angel Nation and Leaves Eyes from performing? Uh, favorite song, that's, ooh, that's really, really difficult. Um, but maybe if I really have to choose, uh, it would be probably the ballad, uh, Last Time Together from Angel Nation. That's like the first song I wrote that kind of started the band. And uh, obviously it's quite, uh, quite a heartfelt song. It's very, very personal for me. And I really love singing it live as well, even though it's quite a difficult song, but um, that definitely has something special for me. Memories about playing live, I think, <laughs> I always have to mention with Leaves Eyes, probably the very first gig we played because 
it was literally, I think, 10 days after I joined the band and we flew all the way to Indonesia. And it was in front of like 10,000 people. And there was this tropical storm and the gig actually almost didn't happen. So it was just the chaos and, you know, everything first time and a massive stage. And I remember massive stage and we still managed to hit each other with Alex <laughs> at some point in the, during the gig. So that, that stuck in my mind for sure. And with Angel Nation, I mean, there's, there's been many, many great, uh, great occasions with, with that band. I mean, one thing I remember always, we, we played in Finland, uh, Lampa Fest, a festival, and it was supposed to be a summer, but it was so cold. It was like coldest summer in 10 years or something. And we were freezing, like it was <laughs> terrible. <laughs> but, but it was really good experience other than that. <laughs> Do you get nervous? And if so, what do you do to combat your nerves? I mean, that's a lot to, to just have been with the band for 10 days to go to Indonesia and perform in front of 10,000 people. That's a lot. Yeah, but to be honest, that's not really the thing that makes you nervous, at least for me. It's like you can have, uh, I don't know, five people at your mother's birthday and it's <laughs> more nerve-wracking <laughs> than, than playing for 10,000 people. So it's not really the amount of people. I think it's more for me like how you feel about the whole situation how how well prepared you feel um and then yeah because i'm i'm a little bit of a perfectionist so i need to sometimes just you know forget about being too much into oh you know forgetting some lyrics or something that probably happened then as well but um I, I don't know nervous it's more adrenaline of course and I think I also need it I think everyone needs that little rush and and, and kicking it's a great feeling before the gig right um, so I don't know I just I think I get a little bit calm before the gig just yeah um, when I do my warm-ups and and stuff but yeah, it's okay it's it's like a normal way right I love that you said that about singing in front of five people at your mom's house because it is true it's the uh, most that, terrifying thing. Yes, yeah, it, it's because <laughs> you know you can't get lost in into the energy of the crowd. It's like it's those <laughs> people, and and they mean a lot to you. Like their opinion yeah. really counts. You know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> that's a that's a such a great point. And before before I ask my next uh, question, Alina, I I just have to make a, a, a comment, if I may, because. One thing that, that really struck me when, when I've seen clips, not just of you performing, but I, I've seen you in, in other discussions and other interviews, and the same thing I'm seeing today, and that is you are so positive, bubbly, upbeat. I mean, you really seem to love what you do, and it just comes across, and I just wanted to compliment you on just being truly genuine and just truly nice and just seeming to love what you do. It's, it's very refreshing. Oh, well, thank you so much. I mean, I just always appreciate people, you know, approaching me as well. I'm wanting to talk about my music and the bands. I mean, what's there not to like? So, of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a great segue. Thank you for that segue to my next question. Okay. Which is, we're going to talk about the music a little bit. So uh, back in April, I believe it was, the most recent album from Angel Nation and Tarry's came out. And it's got one of my favorite songs on there, Out of Sight, Out of Mind. It's on my workout playlist. So when I go to the gym early in the morning, and if I'm having trouble and I need a little extra to, to get that last set or that last you know exercise I'm doing, I find that song, I turn it up real loud, and I get going. So thank you for that. But <laughs> That's great. overall, other than you know my opinion, how's the album been received thus far? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, it was actually a conscious decision for me as well that I never wanted to like write the same album again and again. So uh, this was the third album and I think they're all different from each other. Not completely, of course, but um, for, for this album, for example, we wanted to make it a bit more uh, band driven. So the keys are a little bit more the background. Uh, and it's a bit more guitar heavy. Um, so that was maybe 
you know, some stuff like that can always divide people. Some, some, some maybe go, oh, it doesn't sound the same, or oh, I like that before better, or then people like it more. So, but I like that. But I like to, you know, try new things, and then it divides people. I think that's that's all right. You you shouldn't really try and write music in a way of oh, maybe maybe they like it or maybe they don't like it. I just write something, and then I think, okay, this is this is something I really want to do and then if it resonates with people great that's, that's a that's great point yeah yeah allowing the inspiration to just flow and not judging it or molding it you know just yeah. allowing it to be what it is yeah yeah no well, oh, i was going to say that there's another uh, album i believe elena that's that's in the works for uh leaves eyes so I was wondering where things, you know, stand there. And I have to say, I don't know if you can see behind me, but there's a Viking ship. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I'm not finished, but my grandparents were from Norway and Sweden. So, you know, right next door, uh, so to okay. speak. So I love the Viking theme and the last Viking, uh, the last album. I really loved, you know, every part of that. But so what's on tap and what's going on with Leaves Eyes? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously The Last Viking, brilliant album. It was a huge work to make it, and it was like a, a big, big thing. And then the pandemic came. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's a bit frustrating, frustrating to say the least, because we only played, I think, twice live now uh, with the new songs. And... Um, now we're already making the next album. So yeah, that's that's in the making. And uh, we are, we, I just were, I was in the studio in August. So uh, not so long ago, we were working on the new material and it's, it's going really well. So I'm really excited about that as well. <laughs> well, we hope you come to the States. You'll have to let us know. Yes, that's also another project that has been in the works for a long time. It's unfortunately not so easy to come over there for bands for many reasons. But uh, but yeah, there are some plans and I really hope they will materialize this time. Definitely. Well, Lena, we have loved having you on the show and getting to know you a little bit. And I'll tell you, like I said earlier, your style is so unique. And I think it will be great for our viewers to see what you do in both of your bands. And we thank you for sharing that with us and we wish you all the best. Well, pleasure is mine for sure. <laughs> thank you so much. You're welcome. And folks, please uh, tune in next week. And if you like and enjoy our show, go to our Facebook page and hit like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we're going to end with another song from Elena. We'll see you next week. Began his blood crusade, but never ending.